Hey, what's up, guys? It's Tight White. Uh, my uh, twin brother, the PWM, wanted me do, to do a video on his channel. And I said, you know what? What the heck? Uh, I actually have a, uh, a good idea for a video, I told him. And here we are. So if you are like me and you have a large video game collection, specifically that has uh, jewel cases, these plastic cases that are so easy to scratch and crack, um, you might want to do what I am attempting to do here. And uh, let me just go through before I explain the whole thing. We'll just check out. Basically, what I want to do is I want to have, as a collector, I want to have cases that are presentable and not scratched to hell and not cracked to hell. And um, I want to preserve my collection. I'm not saying I don't want to play the games. I do still play video games. But it is important to me... It is important for me as a collector to have an immaculate uh, collection. Is it immaculate or immaculate? I never, I'm not sure about that. But anyway, I digress. As you can see right here, there's a huge crack in this game right here. And then it has a lot of shelfware. That's a good example. Next up, look at this. I'm not saying that I don't have a bunch of games that are in really good uh, condition, but then I also have this going on, which is really unacceptable for a collector's standards. Next up here, huge cracks, multiple cracks on Big Strike Bowling. Then we have uh, Bugs Bunny Lost in Time. You can see the cracks in this. Yeah, just not cool at all I don't know why Bushido is sticking out that's not really that in bad a condition and then of course you have uh, I get lazy sometimes with the sticker residue you can see all the shelfware from this on this game this does not look good at all all right what else do we have here centipedes yeah it's cracked on the spine so that ain't good. We got stickers on it. ESPN 2 Extreme Games. Big crack there. Lots of scratches. Alright, so that's a good enough sample size of an example. And uh, what I decided to do was order brand new replacement PS1 cases and uh, let's go to the garage and check out what I purchased. All right, so here we go. As you can see, I did get this from Uline. Uh, let me give you the model number on this in case you guys want to get some of these. Uh, the model number is S as in Sam-7766. The description is CD Jewel Case Clear Tray. And I bought a count of 60. Now, the cases were 48 bucks, but with tax. And unfortunately, of course, I had to pay shipping. The total was $71.73. Now... Uline is a shipping supply company and which, you know, the big thing with these, I watched another YouTuber purchase these uh, a while back, is, you know, the condition that they come in when they ship them. And obviously, since they are a shipping specialist supply company, you would think them of all people would know how to ship. You see, we got fragile right there. Now, these are supposed to be the, uh, the legit you know, replacement for your PS1 cases. So we will do some, some comparisons after we get this open. Hopefully everything is in good condition. And then we'll talk about how they stack up to the official PS1 cases. And then after that, we're going to actually, tr we're going to change some, um, we're going to replace some of the cases in my PS1 games. Oh. Yep, it's going to be messy. So very cool, a box within a box.
basically what I did is I opened an account with Uline. All right. What do we got here? Oh, we got a little brochure. Oh, no, we got a whole book with it. So... And then you have, I guess these are shipping boxes, all the measurements and prices. All right, I think that's it for that. Move that to the side. And yeah, very impressed with the shipping so far. And where did my, uh, where did my knife go? There it is. You can see it right there, clear tray S-7766. Okay, there they are. Six zero. Let's see how these come up. Okay, they're just very interesting. For some reason I was thinking that they would be more protected somehow. They're literally in this like plastic sleeve. And I'm assuming you can just pull them out. Yeah, you can pull them right out of there. Okay, so there you have it. Now, I was thinking about this after I purchased this, after I ordered it. Um, but yeah, beautiful, shiny case there. Pristine, minty matte condition. Minty immaculate. Or minty immaculate. All right. So you see the hinge does not flop down like some of the cheaper ones. It stays nice and uh, firm there. That's what she said. Pause. Here's another big thing too. You see how it says compact disc? That shows you that it's the legit case right there because that compact, I don't know if that's picking up on camera. There it is, kinda. All right, man, yeah, this looks really good. And, uh, yeah. Put that over there. Put that over here. So, we'll, co do, we'll do a comparison with uh, an official PS1 case to see if they're exactly the same. But, uh, it feels good. But the question is, once it has artwork in there, is it going to close properly? Okay, it wasn't closing for a second there. I was like, what the hell's going on here? I don't know. That one kind of feels a little funky. It's difficult to open for the first time. You can feel like it's not been open in quite some time. But then, yeah, see that one has a little bit of a catch to it, which I feel like PS1 cases do. But that one doesn't, it's weird. Catches at the top, but not the bottom. So I don't know. We'll have to go through some of my games to see what they do. Um, but yeah, it feels pretty good. Now, okay, so I started to say this earlier. I started thinking when I ordered these that what is the sense in getting these cases and making my games minty without buying protective uh, plastic uh, protectors for these? 
I bought them for many of my games before, especially my factory sealed games. But as soon as you put, if you don't put those protective cases or sleeves on these, as soon as you put them back on your, uh, you know, right next to other games and pull them off the shelf a few times, you're going to get scratches on them. So I don't know. That's going to be something I'm going to have to really think about. I might have to protect all of these brand new cases. All right, guys, let's get some uh, PS1 games that are in really bad condition, cracked up cases, sticker residue, stuff like that, and uh, put a brand new case on them. All right, so I already did one off the of camera, but I'll do uh, some of these other ones. I'll, I'll go through step by step how to replace. But this was the old PS1 case here. You can see all the scratches on it, how bad it looks. And there's a big crack right here. There's a, a number with permanent marker. Just a bad condition case. And now look at the, uh, the minty case now for Die Hard Trilogy 2 Viva Las Vegas. Just looks incredible. Now... Here's the other thing. I want to go back to something I was talking about earlier. So with these cases, and that's probably how PS1 games were when they're brand new. So when you take them apart, there is a little bit of a resistance and they're supposed to be. But when you put it back together, you can't just shut it like that and expect it to close. You got to pinch it in each corner and you'll hear it pop in and then that pops in and now it's secure. So that's how you close it. So there's no problem with any of these. You just have to put a little bit of pressure on each corner to shut them. Now, I can't remember if I've done this already. If you look, I mean, we're talking about identical cases here. They got the compact disc in the right corner. Um, everything looks exactly the same. Let me see if I can get a comparison at the bottom. Every little detail is exactly 100% identical. So that's what you got to be careful with. You could buy generic cases that are not really the authentic replacement cases for PS1. Now, let's go ahead and do one together here. Let's pick this game here. This is in really bad shape. Uh, Saga Frontier 2. Can you see the cracks in that? Got big cracks, in the top and the bottom. So here's the deal. Open it up. Oh, I actually put this sticker. Eh, I don't know if that was a good idea. Who cares how much this cost at one point? I think I get too carried away with that. Because this sticker should not be on paper like that. We'll just get rid of that. I have video proof of uh, how much I paid for it. I don't need to ruin the game. So anyway, open that up. Take the uh, instruction booklet out. Take the disc out. Put it in a safe place. Perhaps on top of the instruction booklet. And then what you're going to do is... If you like, you can just remove the hinge. Put a little pressure on the top of it and pull it off. And then with this, you're going to, where the spine is at, you're going to pull it apart. You got to put a lot of pressure on it. You got to pull it. So I got that one corner popped off already. Hopefully my nails are clean. I'm very particular about my nails being clean during videos. And no, I think I was digging in the dirt today. All right, so now we're going to pop the other corner off. Okay, and then it should come right off. Or no, it's going to be have a little bit of pressure in the corners here, but it comes off like that. And then you have that inner artwork right there that you can just take out very easily. Okay, put that to the side. So the case comes in three pieces. I don't know if we have to remove this. Let's see if we can do it without removing the, uh, the front case. I 
Okay. Now we're going to take the artwork and we're going to put it inside of there. And then we got to pop this back in. You should hear a popping noise. And then pop the other side in. And I think, oh, there it, is. there it goes. Hear a little snapping noise. Okay, so we're good there. We're going to take the disc and put it back in there. Make sure that pops in so it doesn't fall out on you. Then we're going to take the instruction manual and bingo bango. So now a minty copy of uh, Saga Frontier 2. Look, to do this is great if you're a collector and you're picky about how your games look, but you're also increasing the resale value of these games if you, if you are so to do, if you are to sell these games at one point um, as a collector and you need a little bit of extra money. So, bingo, bango. Now, there was the question of... Would it stay together once you have the manual in there? And yes, you can see, very uh, secure, no issues at all. And there you go. On a, on a game like this, replacing the case like that could add 20, 30, 40, even $50 in value. I haven't looked up Saga Frontier 2 in a while, but I'm just guesstimating. It really increases the value when you go from a, an acceptable case to a like new jewel case, guys. All right, let's go ahead and do another one. Let me give you another example here. This happens a lot with jewel cases. Broken hinges. So we got Rascal here. So let's grab another case. Oh. Take the manual out first, put it down, take the disc, put it on top of the manual so you don't get it scratched up. Pull this apart, comes apart pretty easily. And then snap one corner at a time. Take the artwork out. Now we're becoming a professional at this. Oh! I am not a professional. I just broke. So I might want to rethink the way that I'm actually doing this because that was not good, guys. Let's try this again. Here I am doing an instructional video and I'm screwing stuff up. And maybe it's because I need to take off the... I'm going to go ahead and take this off when I'm doing this this time. And really try to put, maybe try to do one corner at a time. Okay. So I got it that time. Hopefully that'll be the only one that I break like that. That was not good. All right, so we got the booklet in there. I mean, not the booklet, the back artwork. And we're going to snap this back into place. I think we got it. Yeah, we got it. All right, now put the hinge or the uh, front cover back on. Okay, that's good. Put the game in there. Then the instruction manual. An instruction booklet. And there you go. Rascal. 
in a minty fresh case guy look at the shine on that bling bling all right let's do another one let's see if i can break another one on camera what do we have what's another good example of why you'd replace stickers you know we get lazy with stickers this one has stickers lots of shelfware So, pop the manual out. Ooh, it's not coming out easy. One of the pages is sticking for so. There we go. Disc out. And on top of the manual. I don't know why that one snapped on me. I've pretty much been doing the same technique on all of them, but for some reason. That was that one was not having it. I think taking this off helps, you know. Then you can kind of put equal pressure. It's kind of a bear to get off. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes, yeah, you got to be really careful with that. Sure, there's another technique that's probably better than the way I'm doing it. All right, that's a part. Artwork. Yeah, what am I missing here? Now, I think I mentioned in the video that what's the sense in doing this when you're just going to scratch up the cases again right so what i did was and i've done this in the past as I've, i think i've mentioned as well i ordered a bunch of protective cases plastic or yeah plastic protective cases that you put these cases into and then you can slide them off you know on and off the shelves without having any you know getting any scratches on them so i'm going to put the link in the description of where i purchased them from but i'll probably wait a couple of days before i do that because i'm not going to get it till next monday and i want to make sure that they're quality cases but uh you can find them all over ebay and amazon and uh i think most of them do the trick for the most part now I'll go ahead and show you an example. I have one on the shelf. I have, a, a, you know, probably 50 to 100 of them. So I'll pull one off and uh, give you an example of that right now. All right, here's an example of one of those protective cases right here. Now, you might see that this has some wear and tear on it, but that's good because that's what your case would be looking like if you kept sliding it on and off the shelf. So we take... Brand new Rayman, a Rayman. Sound like I said Rayman. And fold that in there. And then you have a protected game that will get no scratches. Obviously, when you take it out of the case and play it, you know, you're, there's going to be some risk, but very minimal risk because you're not sliding it in and off the shelf or, you know, against other games. You know, you're not doing this number constantly. And everybody that has big collections like me stack as many games as they can on the shelf. So they're constantly doing this friction situation here. Pause. All right. Now. Now, here's the other thing. Take a video game that's worth a lot of money, like Klonoa, Door to Phantom Mile. Why would you have this in anything less than pristine shape? It's not in the worst condition, this case, but it's got a little bit of wear and tear. I want to have this in a brand new case, so let's do that right now. This game's what, worth four or $500 now? It's one of those games I actually didn't find in the wild. I paid like 70 bucks on eBay for it back when it was it was worth like a hundred something dollars. So I got a good deal on it, but now it's worth four or five hundred bucks. It's insane. You can see a lot more damage when you when you really look at it. Alright. 
Try not to destroy the artwork while I'm doing this. That would, that would not be good. Okay, that came apart pretty good. Okay. Grab a brand new case. Tell you what, this is probably the most difficult part, right? Good. I, feel, I was about to crack that one again. I got to be careful with these. Seems like when I put my hands together like this, I get it better. That is not easy to do. When they're brand new, it's super difficult to get those apart. Again, there might be a better way of doing that, but I'm kind of manhandling the cases. All right. Snap that back into place before we damage something. Okay, that feels good. Gotta take care of Klonoa, you know? You gotta make sure it's in a mini case, guys. Okay. So there you have it. Now Klonoa is minty fresh. Looking amazing. Now we'll do one more game just to show an example of how you want to upgrade your cases because the game is a super expensive and rare title. Pause. All right, so this is one of the rarest jewel case variant games, Alien Trilogy in the Black Label. Now, I picked this up probably, I don't know, six, seven years ago for like less than a dollar with a, uh, a lot of games that were, I believe, all taped together at a Goodwill. And uh, didn't even know that it had crazy value at, at that time. That was back when, you know, I knew nothing about jewel case variants. And then recently I eBay slayed this one for 108 bucks. I think the last one sold before this one for around $400. So definitely an incredible um, low print jewel case variant that uh, every collector is, is out striving to get this uh, title in the black label in the jewel case form. Now, this is the type of game you, now, again, paid 108 for it. I can sell it between three, 400, maybe even more than that. So, but you can add literally a hundred dollars approximately in value just by replacing the case on this. Now, the list, the seller had this listed as VG. Not for me, I would say the case is good. I mean, it's not, it's probably in between, but we're going to make it like new right about now, guys. I'm going to be very sensitive with this title. I don't want to damage it at all. Now, I will say, I was about to say these are easier than the newer cases, but this one's giving me some issues. Yeah, this one's Titus. Holy crap. See, I think I might have cracked that right there. Well, irregardless, we're replacing the case anyway, but still. Very careful with this. All right, I'm going to put that over there. I'm not being careful. I'm going to take this. And see if we can get this off without damaging it.
God damn, I broke another one. Motherfucker. All right, I'm definitely gonna do some research after this and figure out how to open these better because I can't keep breaking them like that. Lucky I got 60 of them. Maybe you have to wedge something in there. I don't know. It's very confusing. Okay, I got it at that time. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. All right, this is the last one we'll do on camera. I am going to replace my other Alien Trilogy as well, though. Oh, got to put the artwork. Very careful here. It's the rarest of the rare. Okay, looks good. Now, put the disc in there very carefully. Case. Sure, I got that on there properly. This is definitely one you want plastic protective cases for, guys. Games with this much value, you do not want to mess around. All right, there you go. A minty fresh copy of Alien Trilogy. All right, guys, that is it. Thanks for checking out the video. You know, I love my brother, PWM, but he is a dumbass. Yeah, that's why I call him P double dumbass. But, um, you know, I figured I'd help his little, you know, weak channel that he has and, you know, show you guys something really cool here and give you collectors an idea uh, on, uh, you know, making your collection look the very best. So I figured I'd grace myself on his channel. Of course, this video will get much more views than his lame ass collection videos in the car or pickup videos or whatever the hell he does. All right, guys, that is it. My name is Tight White, and I'm out this bitch. Oh, you want to know the music that was playing? If you could even hear it. Beyond Good and Evil on the OG Xbox.